Hello, uh, my name is Ryan Laralde. I'm the Executive Director of the Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce and the Edinburgh TVB. Um, today, I want to uh, thank you, Mr. Aurelio Garza, for being here. This is our Member Minute with the Chamber of Commerce. You know, Member Minute is something new. We started, of course, during this pandemic. Um, obviously, we couldn't be with our members and where we want uh, want to be. We're so used to it. But this is one way we could we found a way to feature our members uh, during this time. So we're bringing our member to our uh, social media audience, to our, our businesses that, that are members with us and, and the public. So I want to thank you uh, for for joining us today. Hey, it's my pleasure, Ronnie. Very, very. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, Mr. Garza, you're a local attorney here in the Edinburgh area, and first, you know, I want to thank you for supporting us. Uh, yeah. In your line of business, you know, I mean, everything is continuing to go, you know. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your business, when it was founded, uh, what you specialize in, and, and all the good stuff? Yes, of course. I've been practicing law for 11 years now. I got my license May of 2009. And uh, I, I, I've had my own law practice. Initially, I was officing out of another attorney in McAllen. Uh, I since moved to uh, Edinburgh, uh, May 2019, which was last year. Uh, so I've had my office here for, for almost two years now, or I guess a year and a half, really. Uh, and, and so I have a general practice. I do quite a bit of real estate. Uh, I do uh, family law, uh, estate planning, uh, and uh, some criminal defense. Uh, but the estate planning is definitely what I think is very pertinent right now these days because of, of COVID and, and even before COVID, I think it's very important uh, only because most people don't want to think about what's going to happen uh, when I leave this earth. Uh, and it's, it's very uh, intimidating and a lot of people fear death, but unfortunately, we all go at one time. And whether you're, you're one or 100, um, you know, our time comes when, when the man upstairs says it's our time and we want to make sure uh, that our things, you know, go to the right people. Well, you know, I never, I, I never thought about, you know, we'd be in this, you know, this is a hundred years, this has happened the last time we had a pandemic. I never thought that we'd be talking more about, you know, wills or power of attorneys, you know, and, you know, we represent over 400 businesses in the Edinburgh area that are members. And I think it's important, you know, especially with them um, during this time, you know, a lot of them interact, especially our, our, our fast service industry or our restaurants, you know, they're interacting with the most, you know, and for outright, you know, trying to make their businesses and uh, uh, survive and, and put food on the table as long as they're employees, you know, but, you know, you're, you're out there putting yourself at risk during this time. And yeah. uh, um, um, it hasn't, you know, clicked, but it's important now. I think a lot of more younger people, especially since COVID didn't, uh, it didn't discriminate on age base, you know, and, and down here, you know, it was focused more on, on uh, the older uh, population, but, you know, we had 20s and 30 year olds, you know, myself, I'm late 30s. I never thought about, you know, writing a will, you know, I did have life insurance, but most people, you know, don't think of those things till later on. But, you know, I think COVID is a great reminder, um, unfortunately, but to have those things prepared for your family and for your loved ones so they're not, you know, struggling at the end, you know, um, and putting more uh, more emotion into, you know, losing a loved one at that at time of need. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Ronnie. And, and uh, you know, that number that you gave as far as the amount of members for Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce, the 400, I mean, that's at least 400 separate families, you know, that, uh, you know, if they don't have their estate uh, in order, their estate planning in order, you know, they're going to be in disarray. And, and that's just the the members. Uh, I'm pretty confident there's a lot more businesses out here in, in, the, in just Edinburgh alone uh, that, that are not part of the Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce, uh, which you should. Uh, uh, that are not members of the Chamber of Commerce, but you know that number is 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 astronomical, especially if there is no estate planning in place. Because well, what's going to happen to the business when the the business owner passes away? You know, you want to make sure that uh, you, as a business owner yourself, and not just business owners, but individuals, uh, you know, have something in place so that when that time comes. Uh, you know, there's already some organization or some setup as far as who's going to get what, who's going to pay what, uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. 
That's that's good to note, and and especially you know with businesses and 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 a lot of them being small and family businesses, you want that process to be as smooth as possible. So that there's there's no you know um, um, there's no hesitation. There's no you know um, bad synergy after the fact. Um, so it's better to get that out right. What are some of the 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 common misconceptions or you know when drawing a will or a power of attorney? I think the biggest problem that I've seen is um, people getting a, a, a will from one of those uh, internet sites and they just pull it out and, and they think that it fits their particular need. Uh, they sign it and, and unfortunately I've seen many of those types of wills come in front of me and, and I have to give that love to, that uh, that uh, that love that loved one, that family members, uh, deceased individual and have to let them know that their will is, is invalid. Uh, it won't be accepted by the probate court. We have a probate uh, court here in Hidalgo County uh, that regularly re regularly reviews wills. Uh, and there are certain um, requirements for a will to be considered valid. Uh, of course, other than making sure that the individual is, is of sound mind, mentally capacitated and able to make the decision for themselves, there's, a, there's also gotta be two witnesses. Uh, those two witnesses have to be able to you know, establish or inform the court uh, that in fact that person was mentally competent, was of sound mind, and did want to, um, you know, execute that will. Uh, so I think that's one of the biggest problems that I've seen. It's just uh, wills uh, that people think are valid, uh, but unfortunately are invalid. And also speaking about the invalidity of a will, uh, a will while you're still alive essentially means nothing. Um, because that will does not come into play until after you pass away and only until after you take it to the probate court uh, where it's proved up. And by prove up, I mean you're able to establish establish that the will uh, was legally uh, executed. Gotcha. Um, you know, a lot of this is kind of, you know, uh, hard to talk about, but um, I mean, can you tell me um, some of the experiences or what you feel that, you know, by having these things set in place, what is the benefit of that, you know, um, after, you know, I'm not uh, around, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, as far as the benefits, you know, certainly I couldn't explain it in just one, uh, in, a, in a short minute uh, conversation, but definitely at least the, the benefits or one of the benefits of having a will in place is that you actually have established what's going to happen to your property. Uh, something that I explain to my clients uh, besides the will is, is a trust. Uh, many people don't even consider uh, a trust because it costs a little bit more money. Um, but in essence, a trust protects you from possibly having to go to court. Uh, if you establish a trust with a lawyer, uh, you know, you're able to put in that property into that trust. And you, while you're still alive, manage that property. You can sell it, you can do whatever you want with that property as long as you're alive. The moment, the minute that you pass away, your your successor trustee, somebody who you uh, know to trust, uh, will take over. In other words, they don't even have to go and get permission from the court. Uh, they don't have to get anything other than sign a document and provide proof of your death to a certificate, uh, to a death certificate uh, that, the that the individual who created that trust uh, has passed away and then you take where that successor trustee will take uh, on the duties of yourself and that person will be responsible uh, to manage that property uh, so that they can either uh, give it to whoever it's going to go to whoever you've designated in that trust uh, of course if there are any debts that need to be paid uh, it's also very important to know regarding debt those debts are not the personal responsibility uh, of the of the person who 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 is the beneficiary is still the responsibility of the deceased individual, uh, which, which in essence, the estate would be responsible for those debts. Gotcha. Okay. And on top of that, you know, peace of mind, just knowing that all that will be in place after the fact and your family will have all that guidance that's already been in place, you know, for, uh, absolutely, for, Ronnie, you I know, mean, for I, them I, to, 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 I to more say, I, be I can't as tell you smoothly as possible. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't tell you how many times I've seen it where, where there's nothing in place, not a will, not a trust, nothing. And, and unfortunately years have passed since the individual uh, 
since the individual passed away already. And in fact, some of those loved ones, loved ones have passed away too, which complicates things even more, especially when you're trying to transfer uh, property. Now, and speaking of property, that's another thing that, that I forgot to mention. I mean, I, I do handle quite a bit of real estate here in my office. Uh, we do a, a bunch of uh, real estate transactions. And out of those real estate transactions, we see so many problems uh, with that description I just gave you where loved ones and loved ones of loved ones uh, have passed away and nothing was in place. And so it makes it that much more difficult uh, to transfer the property over to somebody. Buying. Well, I hope, you know, um, um, when we post this video, when, when our members see it, you know, the community sees it, that they can reach out to you and, and, you know, I know, I know there's a lot of this that's being talked about inside the homes. And, you know, I, I, I foresee a lot of action taking place, you know, I was talking to an insurance agent uh, earlier this week, you know, um, and they're seeing an increase of life insurance from all across the spectrum of ages, you know, obviously because what, what is going on, but um, hope, um, hopefully we can, you know, send some people your way, you know, and, uh, and um, they can, you can answer all their questions and we can get people uh, um, more at ease you know, with Ronnie, these things. I mean, what I do here in my office, I typically do not charge a consultation for 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 Wales estate planning um, because I feel that the information. I mean, I just gave you a small tidbit of information pertaining to wills and trust. Uh, there's a whole bunch more that we can discuss uh, that we can get into as far as planning for your uh, particular uh, for your particular estate plan. Uh, everybody's different. Uh, we didn't even talk about, for example, a power of attorney. I know you had brought it up a little bit, um, but a power of attorney, I mean, that document in of itself is, is, you know, not financially worth a whole bunch of money, but definitely will give somebody the peace of mind. We hope that we don't become incapacitated, that, uh, you know, we don't suffer for something that, you know, we cannot just, we can't make decisions but unfortunately, mm-hmm. we don't we don't decide that. Uh, you know, if something like that happens and you don't have a power of attorney uh, designating someone to make those decisions for you, unfortunately, your loved ones will have to go to court and ask for permission uh, from the judge to be able to get uh, a guardianship, for example, to be able to make decisions for you. Uh, all of those things. I mean, I discussed with the uh, with the potential client uh, at my initial consult. Uh, where we discuss a will, power of attorney, medical power of attorney, which uh, essentially a medical power of attorney is similar to the regular power of attorney, uh, but this is in reference to decision making for for medic, medical decision making. Uh, in other words, I mean, so long as I'm able to make my medical decisions for myself, I'll do them and I will do them. But if something happens where I can't be, or I don't have capacity, uh, legal capacity to be able to make those decisions, I designate someone to make uh, those medical decisions for me. And you also have a physician's directive, which nobody, I mean, I don't think I've had a single individual, I've explained this document that actually wants to talk about it, but it's very important because if a doctor says that you have a terminal condition, one in which you're not expected to survive, you know, do you want to be placed on life support or do you want to be taken off life support? You know, those are the type of things, decisions that you want to have already in place before they actually happen. Hopefully they yeah. don't happen, but the reality of life, especially with COVID, is that they do happen. Uh, and you want to make sure that you have that in order. I know you mentioned, uh, you, you know, you have uh, uh, some young ones uh, and, and you want to know, well, what's going to happen with my children if something happens to me? Um, you want to have a designated guardian in place that way, you know, if someone that you trust, the court will have to appoint someone to take care of your kids. Well, what better uh, than to have a decision even after you've gone to say, you know, I trust my my sister or I trust my brother or I trust, you know, whoever it is that, that you trust with your kids. Uh, and that's also, you know, part of the discussion in, in my consult. Um, you know, obviously with the time that we have here, you know, we just kind of, you know, just uh, briefly explain or discuss uh, these issues, but certainly, you know, you're more than welcome to call my office and, you know, we can discuss this further. Good. Well, and, um, you know, we 
want to say thank you, you know, for 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 supporting uh, the chamber and your membership, you know, um, is a lot to us. You know, we do a lot, you know, for our local businesses and um, we do a lot of community events, quality of life. So this has been a, a, a difficult time for us, too, you know, and um, but we're glad, you know, you continue to you know, reach out to us and hopefully we've returned the same, you know, fa favor, giving Absolutely. you all the information you need and, and everything. But, um, now, as um, I mentioned, Ronnie, thank, thank you all very much. You definitely do a lot. Uh, I know things are a lot more difficult with, uh, with COVID. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I think, uh, I, I, I remember seeing a bunch of y'all's emails, you know, helping out the community, helping out your members. And, and I know that y'all are still doing that. The fact that you all reached out to me, uh, you know, so that you all can uh, carry on with this project. It gives me great honor as well to, to be able to provide that information to you and, and all the members and to anybody in the community. You know, it, it, you know, as they say, knowledge is power. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't know the benefit, you know, of having, uh, for example, their estate in place uh, or whatever other issues they have. I mean, certainly it's best to communicate it with someone uh, who, who is well-versed in this area. 